Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga, and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. Happy New Year! It's 2024 now, officially, and I'm coming to you with another episode. Maybe, um, I might not be coming with another podcast episode in, like, the very short future, um, but I wanted to come out with one now before the baby arrives and who knows how how it's going to be after, but I do hope to continue being able to uh, knit and record um, and share in the making. And I have some finished objects to show you today and I have some whips. I cast on something new that I finished and I am planning on casting on something new today maybe just to have something simple to take to the hospital when the time comes and uh, a few acquisitions um, so maybe I'll just start with what I have on top because that's easier so during um my pregnancy, I have been wanting to make these little pacifier straps. Is that the the English name for it? Um, I'm Norwegian. In Nor Norway, we call it Smokisnur. And I have been eyeing this one pattern that uses a jasmine stitch. And I have another pattern that uses the jasmine stitch, but I thought that maybe um, if I bought the pattern for this and supported them, then they would teach me some fancy technique for attaching the top and bottom, but no, it's just a jasmine stitch and then you have to like sew the ends on afterwards. So do with that what you want. But, uh, this is a pattern, if you're interested, that is on Ravelry for $5, I think, which is a bit pricey but um for for what you're getting but uh it's uh very easy crochet um and i use these little silicone rings that you put around the pacifier i don't even know if my kid is going to use a pacifier but i have these and if she doesn't then i can get these and then i have some little clasps at the end and um, the thing with these is they're not supposed to be more than 22 centimeters, including the silicone ring or the clasp, one of one or the other, um, for choking hazards. So all of these are shorter. I made three different lengths. I figured it doesn't really matter um, that they're all like the same length. Um, the first one I made, I used Rauma Finul for this one. And I didn't do um, as many like crochet petals as in the pattern because my gauge was obviously off because it's made in, you cast on this way and then go back and forth to create the flower. And I made all of these three last night. It's very quick. So I don't know why I put it off for so long. So I made one with Ramofino. This is a great scrappy project. You can even use like your small scraps that you're not sure you're gonna have enough of. And it's such a quick project that if you run out of yarn, then that's okay. Then you just scrap it and use another yarn. This is from an advent exchange that I did with Amy Palco last year. This is the color Sunrise in Holst Super Soft. I thought it was a nice, happy yellow color. And this is my advent from, not last year, but the year before, from Zakami. And there was this very cute little pink in that advent. And it's not something that I make for myself, but I thought it would be very cute for Nelly. And it is so soft. This has some silk and cashmere in the blend. I believe it's... Um, baby alpaca, silk, and cashmere. So, beautiful, beautiful base. 
And for this one, I first, I made it one, <laughs> I made one first um, using a 2.5 millimeter crochet hook. And it was just a bit too floppy and easy for the strands to catch on to things. It's, it was very loose. So I went down to 2.2. And I just focused on making the petals a bit tighter, and I think it looks a lot better and more functional in the in the tighter gauge. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe this could be like a bookmark or something. But yeah, so that's what I made. So this is a 20 gram mini, and I made two, and it still looks like a 20 gram mini. It really does not use a lot of yarn. So that's some finished objects and I might make more. Uh, I just need to get more clasps. I still have several of these loops. Uh, I also need to look to see. I, I received a couple of pacifiers but I don't remember if if they're the kind that will fit these things or not. Um, but I figured it would be better to be able to take them on and off for when you need to like wash or sterilize pacifiers instead of um, having to boil wool that was my idea so yeah that is one let's see where I can put this and then uh, last time I showed this and I've gotten a lot of questions on Instagram so I thought I would show it again this is the Sastrugi tree skirt by Amy Gunderson and I finished it for Christmas just in time but I hadn't washed and blocked it. So now it's been washed and blocked. And by blocked, I mean I lay it flat to dry <laughs> on my heated bathroom floor and just kind of try to flatten it and lay it nicely so it dries in that way. It didn't really need any pinning or blocking mats. It relaxed very nicely. And for this, I used uh, Drops Alaska held double to get gauge. I needed 22 balls of it and I ran out for um, for the in the end so I had to use some other yarn to just do the I-cord bind off and that worked out well. I think I used Sonne's Garn Baby Ullanette and I held five strands of that to get the same gauge as a double Alaska. And now that I've shown it all nice and even i'm gonna pack it away and hopefully it will be brought out next year for a christmas tree this year we just had like a little one because we celebrated away but i think it's something nice about having like a magical tree in the house when you have kids and next next christmas season we will have a kid in the house so i'm happy to have this for them and I finished these cute little pants that I was showing last time. These are the, it's a free drops pattern. Oh, what's the name? If it doesn't come to me, I will put it on screen now, but it's a free um, drops pattern. That is just a two by two pearl uh, pattern. There is no elastic band needed no fuzz you just need your knitting needles and the yarn <laughs> and the yarn for this was gifted to me from Garn Specialisten they are a online store in Denmark and Norway but they do ship internationally um, they take yarn that is left over from the clothing industry on cones and hanks and then they redistribute it um, through their online store to knitters at a very decent price. And this was a cone of, of Italian Merino. And I thought it was a little bit stiff on the cone, but I thought it would be perfect for a pair of pants. And I think it is really the perfect yarn because it does have more structure to it than the like super soft Merinos that I have touched before. I do not think this is gonna pill in the same way it doesn't f it doesn't feel like it's going to be super pilly it feels like it's going to hold up really well and 
uh, I want to make more of these pants during the next year. I think it's a great pattern for kids and for gifting if you have someone in your life because they are super stretchy in this way and you make the tummy part really long and you make the legs really long and then you just fold up the legs and unfold them as the child grows and the same with the tummy if it's too long there you just fold it down and they are smaller i think it's genius so i want to make more of these um the color for this was dusty brown a very practical color in my opinion and i think that it uses two needle sizes, so it uses a smaller needle size for the top part of the belly. And then there's some German short rows. There are some increases here, and then you bind off the center stitches. Um, just because babies tend to have more of a gap between their legs because of the diaper and everything. And then for the legs, there are a few decreases, and then you just knit straight and... I added a centimeter to the body and I added a couple of centimeters to the legs as well just so that it can fit a bit longer and also Nelly is on the larger very top end of the normal scale and she is looking that it at the ultrasound it looks like she's having very long legs which wouldn't be weird since we are all very tall in this family. I think the shortest person in our family is probably me and Matthias's moms and they are taller than 165 centimeters and then most people are closer to 180 or taller so tall people in this household and yes so I finished those I will be making more this is a, one of the smaller sizes, I think about um, up like zero to three or one to three months old. And I don't know if I'm going to make the next size or if I'm going to just skip a size and make a bigger one. We'll see. Uh, but I do really like this yarn and I think I'm going to be making more, but maybe I should make a, a pair of pants in a different color and then another size larger than that again this color again just to have some variation in her closet um next finished object i forgot to show you last time this was finished when i was at the cabin by the way what i am wearing is the amy slipover i always forget i wear this all the time i um usually i feel like knitwear is something that can dress down an outfit, makes it more cozy, homey, um, in a lovely way. But this uh, slipover in this very dark charcoal color, I feel like it's very professional looking and it dresses up outfits. So I, wear, I wear it all the time. Hence why I'm making my third one. <laughs> but this, <laughs> I digress, this is the Miles shirt jacket and I had it finished last time but I forgot to show you. So this is a huge cardigan, if you can see, but it's really more of a jacket. And I knit the size large. I could probably have knit the size small too, because it is very oversized. But I wanted, um, I wanted something very big. Um, usually, I think I would usually be a medium, but in my third trimester and what double xl or something <laughs> at least in the center <laughs> and i just wanted something um that i could wrap around the tummy and also if i shawl carry nelly after birth then this could wrap around both of us um if it's cold and it's <laughs> minus 18 out right now so it's cold and i used the hillesvog unspun for this i held two strands together with a silk mohair and it's knitted quite a loose gauge so I don't feel like this is I don't feel like it's a very sturdy fabric um it's very big it's very long it's not heavy but I am a little bit worried about 
destroying it just because it is at a looser gauge. This is the same yarn, just one strand of it with silk mohair, but it is knit on very small needles, so it's a very tight gauge, and I'm, I'm not afraid of anything with this one, but this one feels a little bit more floppy and loose because of the gauge, so yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be something that I wear in and out of the house every day and don't worry about it. Like, I'm not going to garden it with outside in this because I'll be aware, I would be afraid of snagging it on something, but the silk mohair definitely does help. So we'll see. We'll see how much I end up using it in the end. It is very, very cozy, very soft. Um, and as always, I end up going for coconut buttons. I think I have gone for coconut buttons. I don't even know how many cardigans I've knit, but let's say I've knit 10 cardigans, then nine of them has coconut buttons. And <laughs> these coconut buttons even had, this is supposed to be the, the front side, like a glazed over brown orange, but I went for the back side. As I often do. I has, it only has four buttons on this one and then it has the big pockets. I don't know if you can see but yeah it has very big pockets and very up close here <laughs> but ooh, it is super snuggly and now that I have shown it to you uh, all nice and pristine, I can start wearing it. But yeah, very happy with this one being done and ready. And then I have more finished objects, but I wanted to show you something that I found in a secondhand store here. So there's a new concept in the town where I live. Um, they have it other places where people can rent like a stall in a store and bring their own clothes that they don't use anymore. They set the prices themselves and then the store sells it and they get like a small commission, but people receive the rest. And I found this little romper. This is a knit romper in, I believe drops air based on the feeling and the look of the yarn, quite a loose gauge and it doesn't say the size, but I am, this costs a dollar. So I thought it was very cute and it looks really nice. And it's just a nice little layer piece to have on top of other uh, wool undergarments in the winter for a baby. So I got this one. I thought it was very nice. And also that person undervalued the value of their knitting, I think. Uh, mm, mm, mm. I finished the transactional knit that I made. So someone I know, I wanted to buy a sheepskin of for Nelly and they suggested that we do a trade. I knit a sweater and they send the sheepskin. However, the sweater that they chose were a lot more cumbersome than what I had in mind. <laughs> uh, this is, it's a beautiful sweater. It's the Rallargense by, is it Dala? It's a free pattern, um, but it was, I, I bought it with a yarn kit to, to make for her. She, she sent me what she wanted and it has a lot of elements to the way of knitting that I do not enjoy. So it was not a pleasurable knit for me and I wouldn't even make this for myself because of those elements so let's talk about it this is all the yarn I have left by the way from the from the kit it's um alpaca forte by Dalegarn. it's an alpaca nylon blend really soft nice yarn but I did not enjoy knitting with it for color work <laughs> it's too slippery so first off this is knit bottom up I prefer top-down constructions. Second, it has a very long twisted rib that is both in the body, sleeves, and neckline. And the neckline is also folded over. If I were to knit something for myself, 
I would probably not do such a long twisted rib. I would either do it shorter or do a regular rib. Um, second, um, when I knit for someone that is not, you know, like a very close friend or family member, um, or I, I don't do transactional knits, so <laughs> this is it. I, but I wanted it to be as per pattern because that's what she wanted. Um, and therefore I did magic loop two sleeves at a time to have them be identical. I did not enjoy that. <sighs> Color work. It's, it's also very thin needles. I think three and 3.5 millimeter needles were used for this pattern. The color work was really hard to get even because of the yarn being somewhat slippery and it just wasn't as nice to knit color work with as a more wooly yarn. Uh, but I do think I still managed to get it quite nice and even. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> not my favorite but it is beautiful this is the size medium i feel like it looks like a large but i blocked it and it is to the dimensions of the size medium pattern so hopefully she will be happy with it i would be worried about um an alpaca garment like this because it has a tendency to be very drapey the alpaca fiber so i'd be worried about it growing a lot and also, I have a tendency to itch a little bit from, from alpaca, especially on my chest, even though it feels really soft in the hands. So, but it's not for me. So I will get this shipped out to her soon. And then that is out of the way. It was stressing me. I, it, it took quite a lot of brain power to do this. Most of the color work chart were three colors at a time. So you held both the brown, yellow, and white together for a lot of the color work. And I just thought that when the baby arrives, I'm not gonna have the time, energy, or brain capacity to finish this for someone else. So I really, really wanted to get it done before the baby comes. And I'm very happy to say that I did. Out of the way. No more transactional knits for me. <laughs> it's just not worth it. <laughs> for some people it is and that is totally fine. I am not ashamed to say that I'm a selfish knitter because I knit because it's something that gives me joy and pleasure. So if something doesn't give me joy and pleasure I don't want to knit on it and I think everyone should be entitled to knit things that make them happy. So that is my message to you you know, feel good about what you're making, I guess. <laughs> My mom very, very, very kindly knit up this for Nelly, and I wanted to show you because I thought it was so pretty. She used a vintage pattern from a magazine way back. It's one of those sleeping bags or kicking bags um, that's just closed in the bottom. And uh, she used Rauma Finol for this in very similar colors to the square blanket in the Rauma Finol that I have made um, for Nelly. So this is going to be so cute when she is sleeping and it's cold to have this and that blanket. And um, in Norway, it's normal for kids to sleep outside as long as it's not extremely cold. Um, and it's important to have good layers and that they are nice and warm. Not too warm, but warm. And this, I think, is probably the warmest thing that I have for her um, in a non-windy condition. Because this is just such a good wool. And it has little buttons. She sewed on little me metal, like you call these that you just push um she first tried with some plastic ones but we were worried that they would break over time so she sewed in some metal ones and it is quite big so if i put a baby in this um 
this winter it will probably more be more like <laughs> a face here and then the whole body will be in this i don't think her sleeves would come out of this um but it will be very very nice and warm and yeah i'm very grateful for her making this i think this was <laughs> a lot of work um and once she got that off her needles she went straight into starting knitting the uh, teddy bear sweater and um, I think she's caught by the knitting bug again after finishing that. Let's see. I have started a new whip. And I have three, three more other whips that I have some progress on from last time. One of them being the number 59 scarf by Bisha Bouche. They sent me the yarn for this. And I have now started like the second half of the yarn quantity. Sorry for the wrestling. This is a beautiful um, scarf. This is one of the th scar or patterns kits that they had for their advent in 2023. It's knit from one side to the other. It uses three colors, uh, 100 grams of each. So I finished the first ball of the green, red, and gold. And I am now working on my second ball of the three colors. I think I will have leftovers once I have finished this up. Um, it is this section. There's three of the sections. You just change up the colors. So I'm, I've just finished the second one. And there are three of the sections, which I have done, one in each color. So I have one more section like this in green and red and just a few more in between sections of of the um this part that uses all three colors. And I think I will finish with just knitting this longer on this end until I run out of it on the yarns because this is so this is really, really nice and soft. Um, it's their Le Gros Silk and Mohair. And it's not one of those silk strands with fluff. This is more of a chained, tubed construction. And it is very pleasurable to knit with. It is very squishy, very soft. It is silky, yet fluffy. <laughs> and I think it's going to be great i enjoy knitting on this a lot and i'm kind of saving it so i'm knitting on it like every now and then in between other projects that i'm knitting on just to to feel something nice on my hands because i do knit with a lot of different kinds of yarn a lot of rustic yarn harder yarns um i play with gauge sometimes you know it feels not as nice in the hands but this one is just it's like therapy for my hands and currently i'm having a little bit of um joint pain which i believe to be uh pregnancy related um worse at night and in the morning and then it gets better throughout the day um so hopefully that will be gone soon but it is not keeping me from knitting knitting is not hurting my hands so i'm just enjoying it while i can so yeah the number 59 and i'll just put everything in a bag while I'm sitting so I don't have to bend over afterwards to fix everything. All right. Next, this one. I've packed this for my <laughs> delivery nursery bag thing that people pack. So um, for me, it was not important to bring <laughs> makeup and stuff. I bought pajamas <laughs> and my knitting and a phone charger and I think that's pretty good. Also I work in labor and delivery as a doctor. Like I work in the place where I will deliver Nelly so I know that most of the things that you need is there. So I'm not I'm not stressed out about that. This is the Amy slipover. The same as that same one that I'm wearing just in a very different yarn. This was unspun with silk mohair 
I very rarely will use the recommended yarn in a pattern. I will go in my stash, find a yarn, and then find a pattern for it. And neither of these are the original yarns that are supposed to be used. I finished the back piece and bound it off. Last time I think I hadn't bound it off yet. I am using some cashmere tweed from Pinsain Design held together with their silk cashmere which is 75% cashmere, 25% silk. The, <clears throat> the cashmere tweed is 100% cashmere and they are a very similar brown truffled color. And I bought just enough yarn to make this pattern when I was in the store because cashmere is a more a more of an expensive, luxurious fiber. And I saw how many meters I would need to make the Amy Slipover because I thought that would be a great pattern to use this special yarn because I know I will wear it a lot. And it doesn't use as much yarn as a um, as a sweater, but I will wear it more than a sweater because I have a lot of sweaters. So I finished the back and I have started the front and um, I have joined the front. This pattern is by Sunnaskarn, but I do know that people have been able to find that booklet from them in English. So you might just have to do some, some research. Um, yes. And now I am just going to knit the front panel back and forth. Um, so just knitting and purling because this pattern is really 50-50 knitting and purling because it's knit flat. And at some point there will be some increases like in the back and there will be some ribbing. And then I will do the straps first because I really do enjoy the straps on the side. I think it's what makes this pattern look really fancy, not just a vest. And then whatever yarn I have left over will go into the neckline, which to me, it's not that important that it's a very long neckline. It could be a short neckline. I just really enjoy the shape of the vest with the little side pieces. So that will be done first. And according to meterage, I should have plenty to do the neckline. I even did four stitches less than the pattern instructed for this based on my gauge swatch. I could have done six stitches left, but I do enjoy a little bit wider and I do think this is a little bit off gauge as well. The pattern is one size only which is a shame but it's very easy to modify just by changing the amount of stitches you cast on for the back piece and making sure that you adjust for the same stitch count in the front and voila bigger or smaller pattern. Um, so yeah very very easy to modify I would say. Uh, so I just modified by casting on four stitches less, but I did the same amount of uh, times of increases as recommended, the same like length as recommended, um, but that's also easy to change if, if you want to. So I have taken this with me. I'm knitting it on 3.75 Haya Hayas, and I have packed this to take to the hospital just because it's very small. Um, and it is very mindless at this point, so I can just knit and yeah, I thought it was a good project to bring, but I do want to bring another one and I will show you that shortly, but first I should probably finish with my whips. So let's see here. I am making another one of the Jasmine stitch. <laughs> Uh, smoky snow with pacifier straps thingies and I'm using another ball from my advent swap with Amy this is the whole super soft in the Scots pine colorway and I've just finished <laughs> making like the first like cast on do you call it that when you crochet probably not so I'm just gonna make another one and uh, they are so quick so <laughs> It was a little bit addicting. I don't understand why it took me so long <laughs> to get it started. Anyways, I digress again. I uh, have a yarn pal in Canada 
Sue. And she very kindly sent me some more McCowsland uh, mill yarn. So we did a swap was it almost three years ago now. Well, time moves quickly. She sent me some McCowsland mill yarn back then in green. It was a two ply and I made the Billy Pullover, which I love. It is such a stunning pattern and I love it in that yarn. And I have been thinking that it would make a great cardigan as well because it has a, it's very kind of stiff. It stands up on its own. And I thought for a cardigan, that would be great. Because whereas the Miles shirt jacket in this yarn combo is very soft and floppy, a sturdy cardigan would mean I would not be aware too. I would not be afraid to put something heavy in the pockets or throw it around. I wouldn't be afraid of it snagging on anything because it's so dense. So anyways, she sent me another batch of Macausla Mill yarn, this time a three ply. So it was a bit thicker and it was in this beautiful brown color. And as you can see, I've already started the project. I was thinking that I would be making the Billy Pullover, but I saw that the Billy Pullover has the same kind of yarn specs as the Billy, the Billy cardigan, the Billy Pulver uses kind of the same yarn. And I think Cascade 220 was one of the suggestions and the two ply that I used was too thick for the Billy sweater, but I managed to kind of um, mess around a little bit with the gauge and get it to work. But with the three ply, it would have been way of a difference in gauge. Um, so I decided to look for something that is supposed to be iron weight in a cardigan. And it wasn't easy because I wanted iron weight and I wanted cables all over and I wanted pockets. And I wanted a construction that looks like it's really staying well on in the front. So ideally I would have one with a neckline that goes like this and then straight down. Um, just because from what I have worn myself from my cardigans, those seem to stay on the best for me. The ones that go straight down kind of slip up the shoulders, if you will. Um, so yeah, I went for the Peated Whiskey Cardi. And I think the designer is Thea Coleman, but um, I will put it in the description box below. And I like the look of that design. Amy Palco made it before for her daughters, so that looked really nice. And I did a gauge swatch. And I found after <laughs> this is, you know, they said you should probably read a pattern all the way before starting. But I didn't buy the pattern immediately. I made swatch. I made a swatch to see if I could even use this yarn for the pattern because it, my yarn is a little bit thicker than the one used in the pattern. And I struggled a little bit um, with getting gauge. <laughs> and then I decided, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. I got the pattern and I did some math to figure out with the gauge that I managed to get and that is kind of pushing it onto smaller needles than the yarn is probably intended for. I had to go down two sizes uh, in the pattern to get like, to get the fit for my size with the gauge that I had. And then as I was reading the pattern, I found it a little bit, it didn't have like a natural flow to me. Cause you were reading about like, the first page is usually, you know, the yarn and the needles and the gauge. And then later on in the pattern, they mentioned that the pockets could be a good gauge swatch. And I mean, I should have thought about that if I, if I knew that the pockets were knit this way and then sewn on afterwards. If I had known that from the beginning, I would have automatically just knit the pockets as a swatch the same way that I do for the Miles shirt cardigan. But jacket but the miles shirt jacket says that very early on in the pattern to do that whilst this pattern didn't so 
<laughs> I wasted a lot of time making swatches when I could have just knit the pockets. But I did those swatches and then I found out about the pockets and I did the pockets. And then I saw that even those gauges were not the same. So I think for my initial swatches, <laughs> this is a lot of talking, sorry. <laughs> From my initial swatches that were in like double moss stitch or something that was listed in the first page of the pattern i would have just had to go down one size in the pattern to make it worth work but when i did the pockets and block them i saw that i actually needed to go down two sizes to to get the right fit so i did that and i finished the pockets in the three ply from the mccausland mill it's 100 percent wool yarn um, heathered, very rustic. There's like little hay pieces <laughs> in it, um, but it has a very nice structure and I think it's going to be exactly what I want for a cardigan. And I have started the body and I am on my third ball of yarn and I have 10 balls or skeins and I'm in the middle of a row, so sorry. And this is how far I have gotten. So I think I have just finished like one, one report of the big cable, which is on the front panels. And on the back panels, it doesn't have those big charts. It has some honeycomb, simple braids, double moss stitch. Um, and that is kind of what is in the back. So the... The big cables are in the front of the cardigan and the pockets will be sewn onto the front here. And I modified the pockets a bit. They're not supposed to have ribbing on the top. They're just supposed to, to end like that. But I really want this to be a functional cardigan for me and for that, I mean that I can really put things in the pockets and I found that this was too short of a pocket if I wanted to put my phone in for example it would stick out so I decided to knit the chart a little bit longer and then I also did ribbing just to make it a little bit bigger of a pocket so I could at least get my hand in there yeah so I think maybe <laughs> After finishing the ball of yarn that I'm currently knitting with, and this is, it's quite stiff as you see, it's not very floppy at all. I think once I finish the third ball, I might do the sleeves. Um, because according to the meterage in the pattern, I could make the long version with the amount of yarn that I have. Uh, having adjusted for um, my gauge and everything and the size and that I'm using a different yarn. But I would, it would be a shame to run out since it's bottom up and she sent this all the way from Canada and yeah, I, I want to make sure that I don't run out of yarn. So I think I will do the sleeves first and then I will knit to the like recommended length for the original shorter version of the cardigan and just see how much yarn I have left if I feel confident in continuing with like the top part or if I feel comfortable making it longer in the body before doing the the top section. So we'll see, but I think it's going to be a wonderful workhouse, workhorse cardigan <laughs> that can probably be used for generations. So very happy to finally have this knit on the needles and I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles for this Aran weight yarn which is quite a thick and hard yarn but I love it and I think the colors is beautiful very very interesting colors yes that and then <laughs> last whip is another pillow. I've been making Stella quilt cushions, cushions, 
by Laura Penrose. So I have made two of these motifs this far. And I started a third one. And I have finished the first um, the first panel, is that what you say? The first row <laughs> of the pillow. And I don't know how many I'm going to make, but I'm going to continue knitting until I run out of this beautiful yarn, which was gifted to me from Knit Shop Italy. They have a similar um, business style to the Ganspecialisten. They buy up yarn from the Italian fashion industry that's left over, and then they sell it to knitters. And they sent me this beautiful cone of like artistic boucle. This is a synthetic fiber, uh, but it's just so pretty. It adds a lot of sparkle and interest to the pillow. And the other they sent is another boucle yarn that is a mix of mohair wool and some a small amount of polyamide. And I'm holding this double and this single and that got the same gauge. And I am just knitting until I don't have more yarn. And I am toying with the idea of being able to make pillows and like a small blanket for Nelly and um, a cardigan maybe, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. But it is stunning. I love knitting on this just because the way the light catches and it sparkles and it's just giving me very happy feelings. And if I do make the blanket, I will make the pillow as instructed, I think, with the back panels um, and then sew them together just because the, um, the artistic yarn isn't very nice and soft. So I think if I were to use this in a blanket, the back piece I would add to kind of cover it with another yarn that is softer and then this will just be more of a front statement kind of thing going on. So yes, that is another whip and um, I'm in no rush with this one. It's just nice to have and I'm going to be doing another um, test knit for Laura Penrose soon, which I have found a lot of different yarns from my stash. Odd skeins, 100 gram skeins of DK or fingering that I will hold double to make DK. And I am very excited to get started on that soon. And then this morning I decided that I want to bring another whip with me to the hospital just in case I have to stay there for a long time so I have something to do when Nellie is sleeping if I can sleep and I was looking through my stash and I saw this yarn from Pearl Soho and I think I have a thing for browns <laughs> right now I got my brown cardigan I have my Amy slipover in a very similar brown. And I was thinking maybe it would be boring to bring two projects in almost the same color, but I don't know. It's a very calming color for me, so I think I think it'll be good. And very different projects because what I am thinking of making, which I have been thinking for a long time really, is that it would be good to bring a half and half triangles wrap. I've made three before. It's such a mindless project. It's just knitting back and forth in garter and then it takes forever so you don't have to be afraid that you're gonna run out of knitting. <laughs> so I think I'm going to cake up these three skeins that I have. The linen quill from Pearl Soho in the color Twig Brown. And then I can figure out what the second half color is going to be later. It doesn't matter right now. I just want to have something super simple and mindless to knit on. I think that would be a good way to go. And maybe I'm not going to knit at all. Who knows? But I at least will be prepared. 
I always like to be prepared. I always bring some knitting with me. And if I forget it, I regret it. Because that will be the time where I need it. So yeah, I'm going to cake this up now. And then pack it down with this. And be good to go. Probably don't need to pack all three skeins, but I'll cake them up and they'll be ready at least. And then last is an acquisition. I guess the baby romper and the sleeping suit for my mom was also acquisitions, but I counted them as finished objects, gifted or bought. I just need some tea. Raspberry leaf tea, not my favorite, I have to say, but it's nice and warm. And yes, I have an acquisition. So I had to unwrap it because it was very crinkly. Okay, so Tiffany, another podcaster friend of mine, she is the person, business owner, creator, behind Typical Bliss. She's on YouTube as well. She has both podcast style episodes and live streams every week. So if you're looking for consistent content, then she's your gal. She's based in Canada, if I'm not very mistaken, but I'm very sure she's based in Canada. And she created this beautiful sleeping suit for Nelly, or she knit it up. It's a petite knit pattern. She used this beautiful colorway. It's like a warm oatmeal, I'd say, and drops air in the smallest size. And it's going to be perfect uh, because it is very cold right now. And then she can sit in this in the car when we're going home. And it's going to be so nice and it's so soft. So she knit this up for Nelly and she also sent two skeins of Briggs and Little Heritage and I've not knit with the Heritage base before. I think I've knit with the Briggs and Little one of their sock yarns and those are my favorite socks. I made the rustic cable socks in them and I love them um, and I'm toying with because I have two skeins from her in this and it's um, a two-ply 113 grams so is that what a worsted weight maybe maybe I think so maybe in the color khaki um, either to make like like a cowl or hat accessory but I do think for my forehead and neck it might be a little bit too rustic so I might make some thick socks in this maybe some thick cabled socks that could be good. That could be very good. Or something for Nelly. This is plenty of yarn for a child baby size. So very nice of her to send this as well. And I dropped it on the floor. But she also sent some beautiful stitch markers that I believe she makes herself and sells in her in her online store. Some beautiful uh, gold and little rocks and a pearl and a little snowflake very cute and i also sent some some yarn to her and i'm gonna be i'm excited to see what she will she will make during the next years um i don't think she has a lack of yarn because she does own like a yarn store herself she sells yarn uh, <laughs> but hopefully she'll enjoy some some Norwegian yarns sent her way and I am definitely gonna enjoy this little Canadian treat and Nelly this beautiful sleep suit I feel very blessed so thank you Tiffany all right I do think that was all of the knitting that I have <laughs> uh, I did want to make one of those um, videos of everything that I made in 2023 but just the thought of having to get 
everything out and try everything on in this close up to to my due date um i just i felt like i needed to be kind to myself and maybe i'll get around to it a little bit later in 2024 and hopefully that's okay because I, I guess it doesn't it doesn't really matter that it is released around new year's time because what it is essentially is just an inspirational video of patterns to give ideas for makers on what they could make yarn combinations the good the bad about a pattern so maybe i'll get around to it um a little bit later uh in 2024 <laughs> And I also really wanted to do like a little video of what I would like to make this year. I had the Dream Knit Cal running last year and I don't think I'll be running a Cal this year, like an official one with prizes, just because I have no idea what's in store for me <laughs> this upcoming year. Uh, but I do want to encourage you to make something that you've been wanting to make and I'd love for you to still use the Dream Knit Cal hashtag so that we could all follow along on Instagram. I got so much inspiration from watching you guys and all the beautiful things that you cast on and knit on. And I definitely have a lot more patterns that I would really like to make this upcoming year. And one of the things on the list was another half and half wrap. Uh, because I don't just use them as shawls, I use them as lap blankets as well. And, um, yeah, so I think that will be my, my next cast on and that would fit right into my dream knit list for this year, even though I have knitted before. And I have, um, I really want to make another cardigan, um, the Norwegian Kofta style with all of her color work. I have made one in 2023 and I made one in 2022 so it would be really nice to make one in 2024 as well um of course I want to make another one of those little pants for Nelly I have many many cute little designs that I have bought and saved that I would like to cast on I have a ton of sweaters for me I am definitely a sweater knitter I feel very comfortable and I enjoy it a lot knitting sweaters but I also have gotten to a point where I do have a lot of sweaters so I am toying with the idea of where I bought this little knitted romper to just see for a week if uh, people will be willing to buy the sweaters that I have that I don't use that much for what I think they are worth and if people just want to buy like super cheap stuff then I will just take them back home again and that's okay too so we'll see. Um, and if I do that, then I have a lot more room to cast on more things that I think I will wear more. Um, but yeah, definitely cardigans would be a good thing to knit. Even though I prefer knitting sweaters, I do wear cardigans a lot. At least I have in the past nine months. And I probably will in the next year as well. And um, yeah, so I'm. I might put together like a little a little video where I talk about all those things that I would like to make and put like photos on screen and everything but this episode is is long enough and also there's a little bit of a logistic behind that so we'll see if I if I manage to get around to it um I have pre-recorded a little video of all the baby knits that I have inherited and made myself as well, which I will probably release um, just so that it's not too long of a gap until the next video. So, but I, I will have to see what happens and I will still be on Instagram. So I'm knitting traditions on Instagram as well. So you can follow me there if you, um, if you miss my face on the interwebs and but I do really hope that I'm not going to be like gone for a long time but I have no idea what's going to happen so I do have a large back load of episodes though from the last three more than three years 
When did I start this? 2020? Yeah, I think I started the podcast in 2020. So there's a lot of episodes to look back on if you were new here and you haven't seen them all. So I have like a playlist on this YouTube channel where you can like watch it all in the chronological order if that's of interest. And um, yeah, it feels weird recording this episode not knowing what the next one is going to be. But uh, hey, maybe I'll be back next week. Who knows? But until then, I hope that you're making all the things that are making you happy and that you have a wonderful 2024. And I hope to see and talk to you soon. Bye.